Hello, everyone. Let's turn the music down just a little bit. A little loud. Okay. So, well, welcome to Caves of Quud. One of the best roguelikes on the planet, in my opinion. I won't really tell you too much about it. I'd rather let you experience it as we play it. So before we start, I do just want to point out that I am using two mods, Tycho's Tangent and Clever Girl, which just adds a little bit more to the world and a little bit easier quality of life regarding your companions. And we are going to play today as an Esper. Oh, there we go. So an Esper is a type of mutated human. In this world, there are true kin, which are humans that sort of secluded from the rest of the world in a way, and they all have their own case, basically, with various bonuses. Um, they're kind of stronger by default than mutated humans, whereas mutated humans have, like, in my opinion, greater potential, but they are much weaker when they're starting out, and their mutations really define their gameplay. And for espers, um, their power is defined by their ego and their willpower. Now you could do a glass cannon build as an esper, where you have a super low cooldown on your skills from willpower, and you have super boosted skills from a high ego. But I'm not really interested in getting one shot by enemies, so we're going to keep our willpower at 18 and crank up our toughness. Um, strength, agility, intelligence, those are all good to have, but not necessary, in, in my opinion. Um, so, we will take the Esper Morphotype. That means we can't take physical... Uh, mutations no matter what and when we evolve later in the game we won't evolve to have physical mutations either but that also prevents us from having physical defects which is a shame because I think tonic allergy is a great physical defect to take if you have Esper powers um, but okay let's take a mental defect we'll probably take uh, Quantum Jitters is pretty good. As you can see, whenever you use an activated ability, there's a small chance your focus slips and you dent space-time in your local region, causing one to two space-time vortices to appear. So this is, in my opinion, as bad as it is, because it can like teleport you anywhere in the entire game or to a completely random level. Hundreds of play like levels underneath the ground. Um, it can also be like a really good way to dispose of enemies you can't beat. But I plan on using companions this run, and your companions can also step through the vortexes, and you'll never see them again unless you find them. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I've ever found a single companion who stepped through a vortex. Um, so we won't take that one. Narcolepsy could be okay. Because if you fall asleep, your companions will usually save your butt. And when you get strong enough, you can take a hit that'll wake you up anyways. Um, I think the most gameplay interesting might be Evil Twin. Where on, every time you enter a map, there's a, a certain chance that a copy of yourself will come to, like, fight you. <laughs> um... So just for fun, why don't we take Evil Twin? It can be pretty hard. It can be really hard, actually, but let's do it. So we're going to take Beguiling, which basically lets you recruit, uh, recruit a companion. Normally, I'd take Domination early, but um, the mod for Clever Girl gives you some control over... Or not the mod for Clever Girl, but the mod Clever Girl gives you some control over your companions. Um, so you have, like, how their stats grow and things like that. Normally you'd only be able to do that with Domination. Um, but we will take Light Manipulation, 
which gives you a light laser and lets you see around you in dark places. So you won't need to ever carry torches. It's great quality of life and a great way to like defend yourself. Now we have a couple of options with what's left. We could take psychometry, which lets you basically identify all technology and lets you bypass security doors. Or we could take Sundermind, which is like a super intense single target attack. Um, I'm going to take Psychometry because I'm planning on relying on my companions to do most of the things for me. But we'll take Sense Psychic so we can sense where other psychics are and try and protect ourselves from them. One scary thing is we, we're not taking Mental Mirror. Which is a little terrifying, I won't lie. Uh, this protects you from other espers. Um, but hopefully we'll pick it up as we play when we mutate. Um, with the Tycho's Tangent, you get access to backgrounds. We're going to ignore that this run because, um, you know, I don't want to introduce that into an early video. It still has a ton of content to offer, regardless. Um, and we will take... Probably the Apostle. Because he has an ability called... Uh, proselytize, I think is how you would say it. And basically that lets you... Um, also convert someone to your cause. Um, as well as boosting your ego, and you get a little bit of crowd control in the form of Intimidate to make your enemies flee. So we'll take that. And we shall call ourselves... Eris. Um, we're pretty tanky, starting off with 22 hit points. Oh, I think you can get a pet with Tycho's Tangent. But again, we won't do that for this run. Um... In our world seed, big banana bonfire. Oh my god, again. Okay. So you have some places you can start the game in. There's four random villages, and then there's Joppa. Joppa is the recommended for beginners, um, and, and it has a little bit more of a concrete story behind it um so let's get into it on the 29th of your yet you arrive at the oasis hamlet of joppa along the far rim of magra yi the great salt desert all around you moisture farmers tend to groves of iridian water vine there are huts wrought from rock salt and brine stalk on the horizon quads jungles strangle chrome steeples and rusted archways to the earth. Further and beyond, the fabled spindle rises above the fray and pierces the cloud-ribbon sky. So those are a bunch of locations that we're going to be finding. Why am I a snake? Oh my goodness, I came with a disguise. That's so funny. I randomly generated with a disguise. <laughs> So, the disguises can, like, help you with things that don't like you, but I'm going to take it off because I don't want my icon to be a worm. Um, that's part of Tycho's tangent, I'm pretty sure. So let's take off this torch because we have no need of it with light manipulation. Um, the Apostle starts off with a robe, which we discarded, or took off. Some moccasins, a cudgel, or staff, and a witchwood wreath. Which really doesn't do anything, it's just some twigs that are like twisted into a, like a crown. Um, now there are some NPCs, and I talk to them with space. And I do have... So this is the beta version of Keza Quad, and I do have the new input manager enabled. It's, it's really pretty. Um, it looks really good. And there's lots of quality life buttons up here. That you can use to play the game if you don't want to use keyboard shortcuts. But I'll stop talking your off about that. 
So, you can share your water with someone. And water in this game is basically the currency. Um, people need it to live, and you trade water for everything. Um, and when you share your water with someone, you begin what's called the water ritual. And that improves your relationship with the person, any factions that like that person, and it lowers your relationship with factions that don't like the person. You can normally check this by examining the NPC with L. You just press look. As you can see, it's me, Harris. If I look at him, his name is Mehmet. And you can read about him if you want to, but you can see he's loved by the villagers of Joppa. He's disliked by Arachnids for telling body jokes. <laughs> And he's hated by Arachnids for disapproving a famous theorem. So, it's pretty rare to see someone disliked for two different reasons by the same faction. But we're about to really piss off spiders. So spiders that see us in this game will try and murder us. Um, let's... There we go. Because we want to we wanna increase our relationship with Joppa so that we can learn a skill called Harvest. Which lets you, like, collect food. And as you can see, we now have a negative 625 reputation with spiders, and are despised by them. Or not, well, any sort of arachnids. Um, not only can you learn harvestry, but you can also learn the recipe apple mots. And in villages, when they're generated with a stove like this, you go to their stove, and you eat their local delicacy. Delicious. It'll give you some kind of bonus effect, right? 11 a natural healing rate. Pretty good. And you thirst at half rate. We don't really care that much about that. Um, but now, we could say, hey, I want to learn that so that I have access to bonus healing rate for the rest of the game. Um, let's talk to this guy. He's another NPC that spawns in the area always. Called the Zealot of the Six Day Stilt. Basically, she's going around preaching her gospel. Um, it says, Wanderer, orphan of the salt, hear me. To the north and the west, through the great salt desert, the six days still splits the earth in two. Seek there the grandeur of Shekinah, first among fathers. Release yourself from the burden that Chrome bears on your sickly flesh. Go, now. So Chrome is like artifacts and technology. And they believe that... So they have this giant sacred well uh, in the stilt. And I won't tell you too much about it because I want to show you what it looks like. But they basically revere the idea of throwing their technology down the well. <laughs> um, and you can say, what waits for me there in the stilt? Deliverance waits for all pilgrims. At the site, you will find the cathedral, magnificent in its splendor. There are statues erected in honor of the Argent Fathers. There are sublime reliefs depicting our most cherished occasions. Here, too, the wisdom of Ekelstot, the second, our highest priest, and make a donation at the sacred well. Worship at the light sculpture of Shekinah himself. You will find other pilgrims among the merchant tents at the Stilt Grounds Bazaar, other converts and priests. You will be among friends. And you can basically say, go F yourself. I don't want to listen to your nonsense. You can be polite and say, oh, live and drink. Or you can say, okay, I'll make the pilgrimage. I accept your quest. And we're going to do that. Because why not? Quests are good. And I'm sorry if I'm butchering some of these names. I know, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not a linguist or a uh, professional <laughs> at speaking any language, let alone English. Um, all right, so this is Joppa's elder. He always spawns. He's another static NPC. Um, basically, he just gives you a little hint about rust caves and how they have treasure. You can learn more about Joppa, and if you ask him if there's work to be found here, he'll tell you to go talk to Mehmet. That's the first guy that we did the water ritual with. So let's learn about Joppa. Joppa is an oasis hamlet nestled between the eastern reaches of the Great Salt Pans and the jungles of Quad. We are a community of water vine farmers. 
These groves lie along some of the few tracts of land tame enough to grow water vine. What can you tell me about Quud? Quud is the world that we live in. Quud is a strange and terrifying mesa to the northeast. Her tainted rivers breed life in all its motley forms. Her poison jungles shelter priceless relics of her forgotten past. But that is just the half of it. For Quud's most precious treasures and her most hideous children lie within the innumerable chrome caverns beneath the scarlet loam. To ply those silver hollows, a spry adventurer's dream. The years have wisened me beyond such foolish ambitions, but you, be not deterred so. So the game is again telling you, get out of here, go explore, go find amazing things. Um, and here we learn about some kind of issue with cave vermin, and he says, go talk to Mehmet. And he also clues you in to the next character, Argvive. Arg Argive, <laughs> I think, in the southwest corner of the village, and we will go meet him shortly. And we'll do the water ritual with the elder as well. So, the Mopango, or Mopango, decreased. Cats don't like us as much. And the villagers of Naruk, which is a randomly generated village, don't like us either. Um, we're going to go ahead and learn Harvestry. And we'll ask a little bit later, once we finish the quest, for Joppa to learn their recipe. So this is what's known as a warden. Anytime a village generates, a warden shows up and they're like the protector of the village, basically. Um, sometimes it's good to uh, share water with wardens. Sometimes it's not. You just have to look at the factions and decide for yourself. Um, I don't know anything about the villagers of Echabayabad. Um, so we'll go ahead and share our water with the warden because you can never have enough wardens on your side. And you can see the villagers of Joppa love him, so we got more reputation with them. Very cool. And you can trade with any NPC, by the way, like this guy. Well, sorry about that. There's sometimes the UI doesn't load. And he has a few things. Nothing that we want. The glow spear is pretty good. It's like an eternal light source. But since we have light manipulation, we don't need it. Okay, so now we're going to go ask him to teach us their local recipe. Um, all right, we got to start the water ritual again. Okay, apple mats. Thanks, dude. And now, this is totally scummy, but if you come in here and you shut the door... You can raid these chests. <laughs> as long as they don't see you, you won't get in trouble. If they see you, they're gonna they're gonna murder you. Um, nothing really that we want. This feather kilt, I think, is added by Tycho's Tangent. It gives you a better reputation with birds. So we'll actually take that. Take this vine wafer so we can eat it. We'll take these water skins for honey. Let's pour this into our other honey skin. There we go. We'll take that. We'll take this water skin and this water skin. Now, because of our low strength, let me press I. This is our inventory. You can move between screens with 7 and 9. Or by clicking down here in the UI. But if you go to the left, you can see your status. These are our mutations. They will level up with our ego. Um... Excuse me. They'll level up with our ego modifier and our character level. I think you have like every odd level your mutations can go up if you have enough ego. So right now we're limited to like level 5 mutations which is pretty strong once we get them. Here's your skill tree basically. Um, your intelligence kind of directly affects, well all of your stats affect your your skill tree, what you can learn and what you can't. But your intelligence determines how many skill points you get per level. I think at 10 intelligence you get 50 skill points. But as you gain intelligence, you retroactively gain any of the skill points you would have lost. So, not too big a deal. For most builds, intelligence is kind of a dumb stat. Uh, like, the only class that really cares about it is Tinker. 
but if you're a mutated human, you could just take psychometry and know everything anyways, so, you know. This is our quest page. Here you can see all of your reputations with all the factions. Dogs like us. That's good. <laughs> That's about it. That's all that likes us. Here's our inventory equipment screen. Um, and this is our straight inventory. I prefer this one just because it's easier on the eyes and you have a list of everything you could have. So, now that we're done raiding these poor people's chest, let's go do it again. Iron Sickle, no thanks. I think the last chest is over there on the right. But let's go talk to Archive, I think his name is. Archive. I need to look up how to say that. And this guy's just like mumbling to himself about God knows what. And he's still going. He's like, must you disturb me? What are you, some sort of treasure hunter? At the very least, make yourself useful and bring me a knick-knack from one of the caves. I may reward you. Where can I find such a cave? There are caves everywhere, you dolt. This is Quad. Try the rust wells, just east of here. Okay, I'll bring you back something. Why not? I'm going treasure hunting anyways. So let's talk to Mehmet. I say, I'm in search of work. You got any work for me, man? Some, he says, some critters are eating our water vine. I think this is Farouk. Claims he saw one slinking around a vine patch. Ugly little thing, he says. Pale white. Eight legs. An ear-splitting wine. I noticed a bit of red dirt in the water vine pool. The same we find in the soil at a nearby cave to the north that we call Red Rock. Travel to Red Rock and kill as many of these critters as you can. Bring back the corpse of one, too. Elder Irudad will reward your efforts. Okay, and we can tell him, I'm not your work man. I'm not going to do your person's task. Or you can help him out. I want to help him out because I need as much experience and rewards as I can get as an Esper. Because the early game for Espers is when you're weakest. So here's our first trade good. This serves no purpose other than to sell. I mean, you can wear it if you want to wear bracelets. Um, so now there's an option to auto explore with zero, or you can press this up here. Shrines often have secrets, and you want to know as many secrets as you can. I'm not going to read the secrets. A lot of times the randomly generated text is a little... I mean, sometimes it's really interesting, but sometimes it's just like garbled nonsense. Um, and I've been playing this game long enough. Well, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, my brain's a little tired of, of garbled nonsense. Um, so these engrave, like items can be engraved. Any item can be engraved. And they also have information and secrets. Um, and just auto-exploring will have your character go around the map and look at everything. Um, as you can see, two of these cushions were engraved with history, which is pretty unusual for Joppa. Usually there's like just the shrine has a secret. Oh gosh. So you can see the uh, the apostle came over here and apparently this guy really didn't like him so he killed him. The uh, NPCs will fight if they don't like each other's factions. Okay so this is a dromad. All the Dromad traders have an icon like this. This guy is static, but the rest are randomly generated. And they're traders, basically. You can trade with them. And at Joppa, they don't really have anything that's super good. Um, but we will go ahead and trade what we can. And keep your books. If you find any books while you're exploring, keep them. And I'll show you why later. So this is pretty good. This gives you bonus. I think it gives you bonus agility. Maybe that's the gloves that give you bonus agility. I'm not sure. Um, some clothing can give you like better temperature resistance, like this ape fur hat. 
This headlamp will give you light in the dark, which we don't need. And I know this is a lot of introductory material. So, sorry if you're bored. <laughs> I talk a lot about this game, because I really love it. Um, okay, so we'll take what we can. And we're carrying 150 drams of water. About a third of our carry weight. We're going to run up here real quick. Did we check this last chest? I don't remember if we did or not. Pretty sure we did. Yeah, okay. We're going to run up here because there is another shrine that will generate right up to the north of Joppa. And sometimes it can give you a quest to go explore a new location. And if you have harvest from Joppa, or if you've got it on a character beforehand, you run to all these water vines and harvest them all. So you'll have plenty of, of water vine for food. Um, now, the, the some of the text from the shrines isn't randomly generated, and you can learn basically what's called the Sultan Histories, um, which can be really interesting. Sometimes they're really confusing, but as you can see, we just learned about a Sultan's former a location that had something to do with the former Sultan, and it gave us a quest to go visit there. Um, Sometimes you can get quests to visit. Sometimes you can get quests to recover an artifact. Artifacts can be completely useless or game-changingly OP. Um, it's all whatever it generates and what it generates with. So a little secret. The Red Rock place that you can go to, there's a secret passage that gets you there. Um, if your character's not super strong, I don't recommend taking that passage. But we will go ahead and start recruiting our companions. Press A to go to your skills, or your abilities. You can also select them down here if you have the, um, the UI Manager pre-release activated. You can cycle your abilities with Control Tab. I thought, maybe not. Or maybe I don't have any other abilities to cycle. So. I'm going to show you real quick. Beguile creature. Now, if this fails, he'll be hostile. But because our ego is so high, it probably won't fail. There we go. So the nice thing about this, he gets some bonus HP. We get an extra companion. Um, we're going to find one more water vine farmer. And we're going to proselytize them. And try and get them to join us. See, this guy's sleeping in a bed. But who cares? Wake up. <laughs> Hello, sorry to bother you. Would you like to go on an epic quest with me into the great unknown? He says, nope, I'm kind of busy, dude. I got stuff to do, and that doesn't involve hanging out with you. So sad. Excuse me, could you wake up again? I know, I keep waking you up, but this is really important. Oh, you still don't want to go with me? That's too bad. You can hear him, he just went through that door. I thought he did. Where did he go? Hmm. I'm not sure where he went. He just magically disappeared. Okay, there's a guy. Wake up, please. Can I do this while you're sleeping? Oh, you can. But he's still asleep. We entered his dreams. We came into his dreams and, and convinced him in his sleep to join us. So let's now wake him up. Oh, yeah, so let me showcase this to you real quick. So now that these guys are my companions, I can interact with them. You can give them gear. You can talk to them. You can manage their skills. Let's, oops, that was a description of him. Manage their skills. And this basically, you'll just say, what do you want me to learn? I'm going to say, I want you to learn axe. Axes are brutal in this game. You can like chop off people's limbs or their heads uh pretty scary stuff uh you want to learn endurance probably heavy weapon because i eventually i want you to have a two-handed axe and self-discipline sounds good as well as tactics okay so this one in the south is going to be our fighter let's give him a name so that we can differentiate the two assuming they live long enough honestly 
Um, Water vine farmer is pretty weak. But we've taken control of their minds because we are a very manipulative Vesper. Let's call this one. Jilv. Jilfa. Why not? So this will be our physical ally, and we want this one to focus more on probably dual wielding with short blades, which can like stack instances of bleed. And we'll have them learn acrobatics, tactics, probably first aid, and endurance eventually. Okay. Jiffa the warrior and oh wait do they have a pronoun attached to them okay that's a that is a her oh that was a her too good thing we named it Jilfa um let's see rename Actually, I'm kind of curious. What would it give her a name from, from her own culture? Nushrorum. Okay, interesting. No idea what that means. <laughs> so let's see. Enable gear pickup. That will make her pick up gear that is better than what she has. So this was our agility-based one. We want her to focus on agility and toughness. I think that's the majority of things that... Oh, manage mutations. Yes, acquire any mutations. And they come with night vision at level 3 for some reason. Which is kind of cool. Yep, acquire any mutations for you. And then your stats... Will be strength... And toughness. You can kind of see he has... Decent agility, which is ironic. Or she has, sorry. She has decent agility. Um, and this one generated with more... She generated with more intelligence and willpower. Um, but that's okay. We'll just... We'll run them as they are. We're not gonna... Spend too much time trying to optimize... So we have a choice now. We can walk to Red Rock and pick up some experience along the way. We could go to the Rust Caves, which are, in my opinion, a little more dangerous than Red Rock. But depending on RNG, they can be really simple if you get a good cave with all the materials you need, or they can be really scary. Sometimes out of depth monsters will spawn. What is that? What is that? What is that? I can't see it. Is it out of. Is it like phased? So, one thing that can happen in this game is something called phase. And you're like distant from reality. Okay, what is this? Wet, secluded witch. An aura of mystery surrounds this crone, her eyes gazing blankly at her diligent fingers, whilst her mind drowns in a river of thoughts. Her goals are well beyond your comprehension. We need to run. Like, now. We intimidated her, she ran away. So we have a few turns to take out the slime. Okay, run. I've never seen that thing before. Oh, my companion died. The witch is chasing her. Oh no! Run! I'm so sorry, ladies, that you were sacrificed for me. Oh, that's awful. It's so terrible. Welp. I guess it's time to grab some new companions. I'm gonna grab two more water vine farmers. I'm gonna pause real quick, and I'll be right back after I've got them. Okay, so now we're back with our two new companions. Uh, we have Sif Muna, the male water vine farmer, and Asmodelia, the female water vine farmer. And we will not be walking back to Red Rock. Instead, we're going to press um, 
Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can use the keys up here to go up or down, and you can use... Um, let me go to the center here. Where are my companions? There they are. Sorry about that, I got distracted. The... What are the keys called? Like, you know when you're doing math, the less than and the greater than sign? Oh, angle brackets. Yeah, the angle bracket keys beside the M and the question mark on your keyboard. If you press shift and the angle bracket keys, you can go up or down. Um, so let's walk to Red Walk. Uh, Red Rock. Jesus. Go down. We get 50 experience for traveling to Red Rock. And fortunately, there are baboons here, which are usually hostile. Yep. So this one doesn't like us. So we finally get to see some actual combat. And that's my laser beam. You can see that goat was fighting that monkey over there. We're just going to shoot some lasers. Ouch. And now it does take time for the laser to recharge. Um, but not too long. Nice. That's a big hit. Come on. There we go. Jesus Christ, that was loud. I'm going to turn the sound down a little bit. Um, so we got our first level, our level 2. Got 6 hit points, 50 skill points, and 1 mutation point. Now if I was physical, I could go ahead and start leveling up mutations. With a with the mutation points, but I'm not. So I'm going to hold on to mine because when you get four mutation points, you can buy a new mutation. And as you can see, my ability is leveled up. So now anything I beguile gets ten bonus hit points instead of five, and I can beguile higher level creatures. Our light manipulation got uh, a one added to its dice roll for for damage penetration. Or damage increment, rather. Um, in our psychometry, it started off at 4. Now we can identify up to complexity tier 5 artifacts, um, which is pretty sweet. And I think there's like three things, four things we could learn. Tactics is not terrible. It lets you like dodge better when you're sprinting to run away from things. But we're going to hold on to our skill points for now, I think. Because we want to max out our persuasion skill tree, which is your ego tree. Um, we want to get inspiring presence ASAP, because it's going to embolden our companions, which really is our playstyle at the moment. We don't really have any idea what sort of mutations we'll pick up first. Oh yes, let me turn down the sound. Okay, I'm guessing it's the sound effects that were being super loud, so we'll just put that at half volume so that our ears don't get blown out again. <laughs> and I apologize for that. But don't worry, we're in quad, they'll regrow. There's another baboon. And yeah, there's some, it looks like a star apple in that tree down there with the little red fruits. Let's take a little... Oh, nice. So as you can see over here, um, Asmodelia got a level. She learned Tactics and Hurdle. Um, I think every five, every fifth level in this game, you get plus one to all of your stats. And then you also occasionally get stat points, like attribute points, that you can allocate manually. Um, so that's good. Tactic is pretty good and Hurdle's pretty good. Oh, he harvested the star apple tree. Nice. So now Sif Muna. <laughs> that's from Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, by the way, if you've ever played that roguelike. He learns with reflexes instead of Hurdle, which is cool. We're just going to chill back here while they fight that monkey. Nice. 
when one really nice thing about light manipulation is its range and you can just like hit things across the screen with it nice so now we're level three as you can see we got our another mutation point but we got our first attribute point as well and we're gonna dump everything we get into ego because we just want to be like a monster by the time well by the time the game progresses to a certain point now we do have to actually learn this tree because even though we started off with intimidate and proselytize um, we can't take any other skills without learning the tree and that gives us another crowd control ability it's pretty much like intimidate instead of being an aoe it's oops as you saw that little white circle that flashed around a character it's like a AOE uh, fear, and then menacing stare is like a targeted ranged fear. Which is pretty good. We're out of laser charges, so we're gonna drop back. We got one charge, so let's take out the enemy closest to us. That'll cause all the other baboons to chase us. While our water vine farmers make quick work. Ooh, what is that? Okay, we got our first knickknack. It is a tube, which means that it is um, basically an injector. I forget what they're called. Yeah, I love injector. So this is a specific type of injector that like make allies charmed, basically, or enemies charmed, basically. We're going to give it to Argive. Um, to complete his quest. We will need one more artifact, though, because there is a second stage of his quest. Oh, I guess I should mention coloring um, on your allies. White is alright, like nothing's wrong with you. Yellow, you're injured. Red is like you're close to dying, and green is like you're just slightly hurt. So it's like a stoplight, kind of. Um, you're yellow. Be cautious if you're red, you're in trouble, you know, basic colors. I think that's all the important things here. Let's go ahead and go down into Red Rock. We trained on monkeys for a while. Now that's a snap draw. Um, anytime you see a new enemy, I recommend taking a look at them. Even if you don't care about descriptions, which I really think that you should, because there's some really beautiful descriptions in this game. But hey, if you don't, that's okay. Um, you do need to know about their abilities. For example, Snapjaws are swarmers. If they're together, um, they get plus one to their hit damage and penetration for every adjacent uh, swarmer. Which, And it even tells you how many are adjacent, but... If you get like surrounded by snap jaws, that's a great way to get yourself murdered very easily. And we're stuck in a spider web. Is this guy hostile? No. So giant dragonflies are not hostile. And we're gonna rest actually and let our friend heal. Ouch. Getting shot by a bow. So there is a tunic. We took ours off earlier for the bird quilt and these we did automate them to pick up uh, gear I think let me make sure I yeah see okay. gear pickup is enabled I wasn't sure if I redid it after I got new companions see that see over here in the right house says it's painted that means it has some secret about the world so you have engraved you have painted um, this is another Sultan history, it looks like, about Timur. And I think they're still doing some work with the Sultan histories. Like, they're going to add some kind of generation that lets you, like, explore the lives of the RNG Sultans, basically. Um, one, two, three, four. Gosh, that guy was tanky. And so there's another engraved item. Um. Now, this is a secret about Reshep. If you don't care about any other secrets in the game, make sure you collect secrets about this Sultan. And I won't tell you why just yet. 
just know that it's important to do so. See ya. Oh, there's a Masterwork Iron Sickle. It's wherever our companion's at. Hello. There's a chameleon. Oh, ouchies. I don't think he likes us. Ouch. We just got cleaved. You see on the left here, the Snapjaw Scavenger cleaves through your armor. So now, my armor is damaged. So it lost one point in dodge value because it's cracked. You can repair items. Um, but many items aren't worth repairing when you could just pick up the exact same thing from an enemy. Later on, though, there'll be things like you'll cry if it breaks. A failed energy relay. That's just some tinker scraps. Now, this ability can be a little tricky. Like, if it says it's not going to hit, like, if I just do it by default, it hit the wall, right? But if you go down, like, past a square, past the enemy you're trying to hit, and then, like, go to the left, you can make light bend a little bit. Which, uh, you know, might be cheesy to you, but it works, so why not use something that works? Slender bronze shield, copper nugget, that's another item we can sell. Or another trade good. Maybe you don't want to sell it. Oh my goodness. There's so much tar. We're getting stuck in it. Now be careful with your targeting. Because as you saw right there. I targeted the dragonfly first. Because he was closer. It was closer. Whatever. It was closer to me. And um. You can accidentally attack things that you really don't want to attack. Well, which wood crown? I think we have one of those, but we'll take this mask. That will protect us from, like, toxic fumes. Um, we'll say, for such a minimal, like, tile style. Oh, and you can see over here, she took, or he took a vinewood sap mask and equipped it. So that's kind of cool that you can just automate that with the mod. Um, for the minimal tiles of this game, like, I really love how they, like, layer the colors on top of them and just make, like, a very unique sort of palette and an environmental style. Okay, so this purple snap jaw is, like... A legendary enemy, sort of, I guess you'd say. Um, as you can see, they're loved by Snapjaws, and they're hated by the Daughters of Exile. So, not only do they usually carry relatively good gear, and have great stats, um, but befriending them or destroying them will give you reputation effects. Um, we... Probably will never care about being friends with Snapjaws, but it would be interesting to be friends with the Daughters of Exile. So we will take this guy, or, yes, this guy out. Um, fortunately, I don't see any sort of, like, scary mutations on him. Like, if he had, like, the ability to shoot flames or, like, frozen beams at you, his hands or face or something would be glowing. Um, but I don't see that he does, so... Now we're level 4. One more level and we can buy a new random mutation. And I'm almost tempted to, to take, to beguile this legendary Snapjaw. Because when you beguile a legendary, if they have companions with them, like this one does, all of the Snapjaws that are following him, you inherit all those companions. But it'd be kind of funny just to have like an army of Snapjaws, but... Also, like, a headache to manage, like, 15 Snapjaws at the same time. I could do could do without that this run, probably. I'm gonna let my friends come in. Ouch. Guys, getting smacked around here. A little help, please. And I think the legendary Snapjaw ran him. Ouch. I got cleaved by a hunter. 
Oh, there's some skin gloves. Um, we'll take those. It gives us a little bit more dodge. Um, it's a good thing that we have a lot of toughness, or we probably already have kicked the bucket. Is that a legendary one? Yeah, it is. So you can see down here on the left that they are injured. And they're red because they're bloody, not because they're, like, about to die. Um, but let's go ahead and give a menacing stare so they're afraid. They'll just run away while we beat the tar out of them. Yeah, so you can see we killed the Snapjaw. Our reputation decreased by 215. Not that we had a good reputation with them to begin with, but now our reputation with the Daughters of Exile increased. And I got hurt pretty bad. And I'm bleeding, which is not good. Not good at all. Uh, let's identify this. A flaming bronze dagger with no cell inside of it. So we're not too interested in that. Let's equip these. So now we'll just have to hope that we live. We stop bleeding. Okay. Lucky, lucky. I didn't have any bandages, so that was just dumb luck. And, well, not quite dumb luck. Your, your ability to resist status effects is determined by your toughness. Um, so having such a high toughness... You know, it, it really does help. Um, oh yeah, there's a mini-map now. I forgot about that. You can move these things over here. I think I have some settings turned off for the mini-map, though. Inside of the UI manager. Um, but if you like mini-maps, you can set that up. Personally, I don't... Oh, also, if you press Alt in a screen, it'll show you all of like the interactable things that you can mess with. I'll show you that again in Joppa. Um, I thought there was a rest. Oh, the wait menu. Wait until healed. Okay. Good deal. We don't want blood. <laughs> or salt. Thank you, though. Ah, uh, they had an engraved sword. Uh, another salt in history. Ooh, another engraved sword. And another secret of a chef. Or a ship. I'm not sure how to say it properly. So far though, this has been a pretty good run. There's nowhere else to explore, so we'll go down. If I can get unstuck. There we go. You sense a sinister presence nearby. So our evil twin is here. And they inherit all of our abilities. Uh, all of our faction relationships. I mean, they are you in every aspect of... Ouch. Ooh, another painted item. Okay, another Sultan History Secret. And you can look at those Sultan History Secrets anytime by going into the menu, going to your journal, and then you can just click right and open up these Sultan Histories. So, it's any time while you're playing, you're just, you're a little weary of reading. You can always keep in mind that you can read it later. So this is how we found a location. Philosopher home. Interesting. And this is a rifle, which is dead useful for an esper. It's a little heavy unfortunately, but once we get some rifle shells, or slugs as they're called in this game, um, we can start using the rifle. And rifles are really strong. I mean, besides the inherent like bonus to uh, being ranged, keeping you safe, they do a lot of damage. We won't be very good at using them, but hey, it, it beats like trying to fight um. Oh, there was still a snap draw. Let's fight melee. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, Sif Muna got another level up. They learned Spry. 
What blew me up? Was it my evil twin? I don't know, but we are getting hungry. One of the nice things about the evil twin, though, they don't have your companions. So, I think that's one of the, like, it's one of the real counters to that defect. It's like having companions. Oh, there's our evil twin. Oh, don't want to beguile. Let's laze this thing over here. And let's wait for this guy to come over here. He'll start slipping. In the, uh, ouch. I'm taking a lot of damage. Nice. See, our companions saved us there. Our light was, like, reflecting off of him. Because you get light. Let me show you real quick. So... You have a, a chance to reflect light-based damage. So, as you saw, even with a 90% chance, two of our projectiles reflected back at us. So we were taking a ton of damage. If it hadn't been for our companions, we probably would have lost that fight. Because we got really unlucky. Um, that's just how it goes sometimes. Now, there's some Esper builds that don't focus on companions, and they just focus on, like, making you into, like, an OP monster. Those are fun, but you also tend to be much more vulnerable. Um, so, for, like, someone following along, this is probably the Esper build that I would recommend you try. And if you die here in Red Rock, don't be discouraged, because every time you come through here, there'll be different enemies... Um, sometimes out of depth enemies will spawn like a slumberling which is this giant sleeping creature and if it wakes up well you can just say goodnight pretty much and I keep getting stuck in tar and slime and all kinds of other annoying things uh, okay is this guy another legendary no he's just kindle thumbed so that weird noise you heard was him throwing flames at us. Um, a little scary, but not unmanageable. It used to be when you killed enemies, they'd leave corpses with their light manipulation, but now they like burst into flame and turn into ashes, which I appreciate. I mean, it, it's sad not being able to butcher some things if you had the butcher skill, but the I like the interaction that, that it was updated to be. My goodness, stop being stuck. Come on, stop sticking me in tar. Grr. Okay, let's just go down if we can. This is annoying. Spider webs everywhere. Tars everywhere. Something is below us and attacking us. Boom. Nice. So she got another level. Ouch. Oh yeah, if you're on fire, don't step in tar. And my fire's not been going out because I'm way too hot, so if this ever happens to you, hopefully you have some water with you. We're going to pour water on ourselves. Pour on yourself. Oh, I didn't mean to pour all of it. Oh well, we should have poured it into another container. That's life. But pouring it on yourself puts out the fire. Um, so let's wait, oops, let's wait until we're healed, does that really hurt? Uh oh, my companion's on fire. Oh, bye Sifmuna. Sorry that you didn't make it. 
Grr, let me have this. Thank you. Okay, so now we need to see which one was proselytized and which one was... Okay. So Asmodelia was the one that was beguiled. Okay, there's an archer down here. Ah, you got stuck. Nice. So we're almost level 5, so she's probably almost level 5 too. Which means she'll get her first mutation, and we'll get a new one ourselves. Centipedes give a lot of XP at this level. Here we go. So we're level 5. We can buy our first new mutation, which we will. So there's Ego Protection, Mental Mirror, and Time Dilation. Time Dilation slows down everything around you. It's pretty useful for saving your butt, but even though this only costs two points at character creation, I'm actually going to take Mental Mirror because there's not many things that can kill us this early on with such high HP. Um, but other espers terrify me because they are really powerful and I'd much rather have protection against other espers. Um, we took a small box. I think that was probably crayons. Let's take a look. Yep, so here's our box of crayons and you can write stuff on the walls and, and whatnot with, with crayons. Which is pretty funny. Um, there's another... Oh, sorry. I just lazed my companion. Sorry about that. So, let's untarget so it'll stop flashing. And let's take a look at her attributes. So, I gave her... Toughness and strength, because I want her to be a physical fighter. Um, so when she used, when she got her attribute point, she, I think she put it in strength. I don't remember ex what exactly what it was, but, ouch. We are out of. Let's see. I want to see if she got. Yeah, okay. So she's not level five yet. Thought surely she would be by now, because we're a good chunk into level 6, but... I don't think your companions get XP if they're not in vision of you when an enemy dies. And when I think the XP is not, like, split or anything, um, I think they just have to be in vision range. Ashes. A spider. Oops. Sorry about that. There we go. Oh, you actually get to choose their mutation. So we could give her light manipulation as well. We could give her a stinger. Or you could give her heightened quickness. Which makes everything she do everything she does like faster. So she'll attack faster. She'll move more quickly. Um, that's really tempting to take, but the Stinger's also pretty good with Confusing Venom. Um, but it is Long Blade, and I want her to do Axe. And it would have kept for better reputation with Arachnids, but they hate us anyways, so we'll take Height and Quickness. Cool. And she advanced height and quickness by three ranks to level four. Whenever you, um, whenever you acquire a mutation, you can do something called uh, rapid advancement, which basically like like ultra levels up that specific mutation. I think you can only do rapid advancement once, but don't quote me on that. I've only ever been able to do it once, but there might be more ways to do it, like at certain levels and whatnot. So I just want to see... She could level that up more. It's capped at 3 because of her level. 
at the moment. But once she hits a higher level, she'll get better access to high-end quickness. Um, I really wanted to see what it was giving her, but I guess that's not possible. Let me untarget her again. And we need to pick up another companion when we can. Probably not you. Wooden arrow. There's an engraved staff. Cool. Oh, another painted item. I don't think I've ever found this many painted items this early in the game. Come on. Stop making me be stuck in webs and junk. Grr, my companion's stuck, so I can't move. Okay, there we go. Oh my god, that's so annoying. <laughs> oh, normally there's not this much junk that generates on the floor. It just has so happened to be that way this time. Now, these river wives, I think, have a chance to drop an ego-boosting item. They're only in Tycho's Tangent that I've seen. What's attacking me? Oh, the seed thing. Those are scary. Try to find those. Ah, so this just completed our quest. What's eating the water vine? This is a Gershling. It is a freaky bug that um, like screams inside of your mind. Like a slightly psychic bug, I think, unless I am misunderstanding. Um, or maybe not. Maybe just the sound is so shrill that it like pierces your skull. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, they are like a harbinger of of bad things. Like they show up throughout history in this game when terrible things are happening. So the fact that you just discovered a Gershling in this little pool over here is not a good sign for Quid. Okay, that was a very tanky beetle bum. We're gonna rest up real quick. Ouch. There's another Gershling. I'm tempted to try and proselyze one of these river wives. I have no idea what their stats are. I uh, only have one charge. I don't really want to stand around. Okay, we do need one of the corpses though. Alright, let's try and proselyze her. Nope. She was not having it. Try again? Nope. So. All of your persuasion abilities, too, are affected by your ego modifier, I believe. So she must have really good willpower to be resisting them. Grrr. Might not be possible. Revenants are shy, craven creatures. Under cover of the beetle moon, they commit to their ritualistic dances. Spreading seeds and sap to all four corners of Quud. They bear oddly humanoid features despite evidence to the contrary. Well, if she doesn't want to join, she doesn't want to join. Maybe we'll try a different river wife with lower vitality. Er, <laughs> vitality. Willpower. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Vitality. Oh, okay, so there's a cultist. Um, they, you can see, the wet glow it, cultist of Agul, Agolgut, beneath the umbra of a stinking robe, flesh smears over the bones of a boy who surrenders his body to the metamorphic Newman. So these guys are pretty strange. Um, let me intimidate real quick, get them off of me. We'll take out the Gershling first. Well, if you hadn't blocked the way, companion. Okay, so level 6, we got plus 1 to each attribute. Um, which is pretty nice, actually. 
That brings our ego modifier to plus six. Um, at level 12, we'll have an extra bonus to all these other stats, which would be great for willpower and toughness. Um, as you can see, we got like 20 extra skill points, I think. Um, and our mutations are starting to get pretty strong. They're level 4 now. So 20 bonus hit points to any beguiled creatures. Light manipulation is starting to get some pretty good penetration and damage values. You can identify tier 6 artifacts and construct tier 3. And we're getting pretty good mental armor against other psychics. Nothing wonderful, but not bad either. We still want to get this inspiring presence. It's just too good not to have. I'm so tempted to try and convert this cultist to our cause, but yeah they're they're gone <laughs> so the cultist robe gives you three dodge value and um a lot of reputation with glow well not a lot but a fair amount of reputation with glow wits we're gonna get it because i think you can sell it for a decent amount and we will go ahead and rest because we're in the yellow it's best to be safe oh there's another cultist does he have claws too? He does have claws. Okay. We'll take him down. Nice. So now... Asmodedilia is level 6 as well. She picked up death throwing, so... If we want to get her some, like... Uh, grenades and whatnot, she'll be much better at throwing them. Ouch. Careful of those. Plants and spikes, they make you bleed. If you have low toughness, they can really easily ruin your day. And actually, since we've just got to the Gershlings and the Cultist, why don't we go ahead and end the video here? Because I think we've been playing over an hour, or recording over an hour at least. Um, so it seems like a probably a good place to stop. I don't think people want to watch a video too terribly long. So yeah. Thanks for joining me in Quad, and hope to see you again. Till next time.